A week 17 preview, Dolphins and Patriots. Yep. You got the Dolphins sliding right now. Who knows if Tua's going to play? We don't know yet, right? No, I well, mean, we, I, I, I think it's going to be Teddy Bridgewater. Unlikely to I'm play, hearing. right? Right. Very unlikely to play. I don't know if they've made it official. I think what we are hearing is it's Teddy Bridgewater is going to be. Oh, it's official. It is it official. It is official. It is, yes. Okay, all right. So, so there we go. Doesn't, doesn't change my thought on the game a whole lot. Again, and that's not disrespect to Tua or anything like that. We know the offense is special. Bridgewater's played before. I don't know. He can make all the throws. You know, the big thing is he's rusty and hasn't played a lot, but I don't look at it as like, oh, wow, right? This is not one of those backup situations where you go, oh, you know, th- this is Cooper Rush and the Cowboys. They got to change the way they play. They can't just throw the ball over the field, right? So yes. uh, at least they'll be able to still run their offense, and that's why they invested in Teddy Bridgewater in the, in the offseason. All right, so this will change the offense for the Dolphins a little bit. We'll get into that yeah. in a second, kind of what changes with, with Teddy Bridgewater and what you saw this past week. Uh, obviously, two of those three interceptions late in the game were right. bad, but what, right. else, what else did you see? Uh, let's start with the Patriots. Okay. Because I, I feel like this is an interesting story in the league because it, it seems like they haven't been able to figure it out, right? Yeah. Defensively, they've been solid. Offensively, they just haven't with Patricia and Belichick and Joe Judge over there, haven't been able to, to replace Josh McDaniels. And so let's start here with, with kind of how bad – the Patriots have been offensively. Yeah. With two stats and a lie. Okay. Two stats and a lie. Patriots offense, before you get into your notes on on what they did and how they've looked. Um, here are the here's how it works. You got three I'm stats. I'm nervous about this. This is the first one I'm really nervous You've about. You've never actually. missed one. You've I haven't gotten missed them all one, correct your whole career. It rides on this one. So here two of these are are true. One is a lie. The Patriots offense has a bottom five percentage. In the red zone. So they score touchdowns per red zone appearance in the bottom five in the NFL. They are bottom five in yards per play. And they are bottom five in plays per drive in the NFL. So all bad news, all bad news. One is, not, one is a, a lie. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it's not all that bad news. Well, but, uh, yeah. I, I have a feeling the one that's not a lie is still the news isn't that great, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to say the bottom two, the last two are, are the, the stats, and that the first one is a lie. So you think that they, they are better not, They're better in than the, the bottom zone. five in red zone. So actually, <sighs> it's, it's they're dead last Damn. in the red zone. So the, for the first time ever, you are tired. You are, <laughs> I, we're starting to find out how tired you are. You've never <laughs> missed two stats in a lie before. So they are dead last at scoring once they get into the red zone, scoring touchdowns just at 39%. Damn. And that is actually 5% worse than the Colts. I, 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 I wasn't, you know, I was kind of playing the angle that, you know what, they're, I know they haven't scored a lot of points, but I was kind of playing the angle that, like, man, maybe they're not in the red zone some of those times. I'm thinking the stall, drive yeah. stalled out to where it didn't count. Right, so that was kind of my logic to get to that, but they're man. actually mid-pack in uh, yards per play. Right, they're right. 15th in the NFL, five and a half yards per play. Yeah, so maybe they do just the stall out um, once they get to the red zone. I, I don't know. Is that would that be the area where they miss Josh McDaniels the most? I, I would, I would say. I mean, they miss him everywhere, but yeah, yes, I would. I mean, it's caught you off guard here. No, but. it's it's jo- Josh has they miss ev- Josh everywhere. Yes. I mean, it's, it's 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 no one area. It's every play I look at. There's an every drive I go. Oh, how did they do this? They would have never done this with Josh, or the receivers would never be this close together, or whatever. Um, but yeah, Josh had a a real red zone attack and understood how red zone defenses play. It had, to me, some plays, and I know still does, that like people in football have stolen, and then people will still look at it and go, wait, how are they doing this? What is he doing here to get this guy open all the time? So he is special. You know, now I sit here and go, you know, bottom five in yards per play. You know, it, it's, it's, ah, I, I, I should have thought of that a little bit just because, you know, they, they're like three and out, three and out. Then they hit a go route down the sideline for – you know, 35, and they rip off a few big plays, and then they go three and out, three and out, and then it's – so, yeah, it's interesting, but it's hard to get your your head around the attack or lack of attack with New England. It's still very unimpressive and honestly feel like it's actually going in the wrong direction right now as we talk about it. Okay, so what would yeah. you see when they when they took on the Bengals? Because you figure even with Teddy Broad- Bridgewater with the Dolphins, Mike yeah. McDaniel's going to scheme up some things. They're yeah, gonna, They're going right. to make some big plays. Right. They're going to probably score some points, so you the Patriots so. are going to need to keep up. Yeah. Uh, against the Bengals, you you said at yeah. one point they can't do crap. They can they couldn't do anything. I, I mean, it, th- this is this is one of those games that you chalk up that you go. I I just don't know how the game was ever twenty two to eighteen. Right? It's it's one of those. It's 
Luck and Shamrock up the Patriots' ass, and the Bengals just f***ing things up to where you go, it shouldn't have been 22 nothing. It probably should have been 30 to nothing before they started that. But then you, you, know, you miss a field goal. You're inside the three-yard line and have to settle for a field goal. You, your receiver stops running on a slant route inside the red zone where you go, well, at the very least, it should just be an incompletion instead of Boyd stops, lets McCourty intercept the ball. Golden rule, no, no, to do on that route. You know, a Hail Mary on a third and long, just throw it up. Literally, Hail Mary falls into your guy's arm for a touchdown. I, so there's there's not a lot of bright spots for me, for me to sit here and look at, Ahmed, to go, well, I see light at the end of the tunnel. I, I almost feel like it's really going to go in the other way because huh. I feel like we're getting the point of the year where, yeah, teams are better, right? There's more accumulation of what they do, tendencies and all that. So people are all more, more over, all over their stuff than they were six and eight weeks ago, right? Cincinnati had no fear of their, de- of their team. The one thing I think Cincinnati was just like, okay, maybe their run game could be a little scary, but they dominated in that department. I mean, you can't run – Cincinnati's unbelievable run defense, but they couldn't do anything there. And they got in their face – and played man-to-man, and one, I don't even think it's, I think there's probably a little fear of some of the speed, like, you know, they got Tyquan Thornton who can run and all that, yeah. but I think it goes into also, like, we kind of know the routes are going to run, so we're not necessarily, like, he's going to run a go, he's going to run a deep cross, he's going to run a slant. Okay, so we can play man-to-man that. We know kind of their route tree, if that makes any sense, too. Um, so, yes, it's very underwhelming. It, it, it really is, and it was, like I said, it was clearly who the better team was on the football field in that football game uh, and just one team who kind of fell asleep at the wheel a few times as they controlled the game. Like I could tell early on in your notes of watching the Patriots offense, it was like from the get-go, from the first drive, it was like the first third down, you're already like – I was already you're, you're like – You're You're over it. Well, I, well it just – you know, you, like, see, what's you, you see games sometimes and you go, hey, the score's misleading. Or, ooh, you know, I know they didn't score any points here early on in these first few drives, but you see some plays and things you go, ooh – I, th- this things might break open here the next drive, the, maybe the drive after that, right? This was one of those where you were like, I don't see how the f- they're going to do anything. And, I mean, the first third down, Hunter Henry got hurt because they ran into his own player. Like, it's like the bad news bears sometimes. And that goes into, like, we've talked about spacing with the receivers a few times. There's that. I mean, you know, what was the second third down? You know, the, oh, I, I, the second third now, I don't even know who to blame. There were so many people messed up. Mac Jones signals to the receivers, they don't get it. Some are blocking, some are running routes. Some guys are pass protecting, other guys are, you know, run block. It just was, it's all over the place. And that's where it's, it's not real encouraging what you see on that side. You know, Bill, you yeah. were there for a year. Yeah, um, It was unconventional to bring in Patricia and, and Joe Judge. We didn't even know who was going to be calling the plays up yeah. until it, it, basically the season started. Uh, like, if, if they haven't been getting better, if they've actually been getting worse, like, does he have to make a move? Will he make a move? Does he feel compelled to do that? Like, if you were, if you had control over Bill Belichick, or you were Bill, yeah. what do you do? Yeah, I, I mean, not now. Like, Bill's not the one that's going to, like... Yeah, I'm thinking not, more a, after this year. I, from everything I know, I've said this on PFT a little bit, and I, I, I know people in the connected to this situation, and I, I'm not going to say I know it 100%, but I know enough people connected that I think there's a very real possibility that Billy O'Brien is back there as the offensive coordinator when the season's over. Alabama gets done with their bowl game. From the people I know in the world, that's where he's going. I don't know if it's a for sure thing, but that's what I've been told. I've said that on Pro Football Talk last week or maybe even two weeks ago. Uh, so that's what I would expect, yes. You know, just this, this is not sustainable, and it's not sustainable not only for the product on the field, but it's just it's going to add to the, the rumblings off the field about Bill's loss his touch and he's too old and maybe we need to get rid of him. And, you know, that's to me, to me it already had the look of a guy that was kind of setting it up to get his foot out the door and leave. That, that was one of the things I questioned was like, was he doing this because he doesn't want to break in a new offensive coordinator and do all that because he knows he's going to be leaving in two years. 
you know, which I still think is a real possibility, but this didn't even pass enough of the test to be able to justify bringing it back. Interesting to see how the offseason develops on the offensive side of the yeah. ball because on the defensive side of the ball, if they're going to win this game against the Dolphins, they still have a chance at the postseason. Right. Uh, it's going to be their defense, which looked good in one half yeah. versus the Cincinnati Bengals. First right. half, they gave up 22 points, none in the second half, gave up like half the yards in the second half. In the first half, they gave up 303 yards. That's crazy. And then yes. 139 uh, in the second half. So, I mean, I guess it's uh, w- which one was more real? Was them getting torched in the first half more real or them uh, shutting the door in the second well, half? Well, yeah. I, You've I already think said the Bengals messed some things up. Yeah, they definitely did. I, I think, you know, I, I think, w- one, they, they, they played a team that I think poses some problems with them matchup or they were scared of. And as we've talked about, we, this, they played a quarterback who's it's next level stuff. You know, it is. And, and the, the, the maturity that Joe Burrow has in year three. And, you know, I always say that, like, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's easy to be mature when you don't have great physical talent. you got to play the game exactly by the book, right? Mm-hmm. But he's a guy that's got great physical talent. He can make crazy awesome throws and crazy escapes. But he kind of does it by the book a little bit more. And as we always talk about, he's just a little more surgical and plays within the pocket and doesn't move out of the pocket until he really has to. Um, so, yeah, I find it more on you know, the, the Patriots defense is good. Uh, I don't think it's as good as we saw in the second half. I don't think it's as bad as we saw maybe in the first half. But I will say this. Here's my problem with the Patriots, and I know I brought this up a little mm-hmm. bit. And here's let's just dive into the problem what they had in this Bengals game was one – I think there was a real fear of, I don't want to play them man-to-man, right? As much as they have good corners and I think they like them, they don't have that one shutdown guy. And I think they looked at it and went, like, it, you, you really have to have a special duo at corner to think you can match up with T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, right? It, it, it's, it's Chase is like, even when you cover him, he's not covered. And same with T. Higgins, let alone Chase can run by just about anybody. And even in this one, Chase dropped a, a big play down the left side. Another moment where you go... Well, they could have been down the field here inside the 10 once again. He dropped a go route, and they had to punt the ball away, right? So that goes into more of the, you know, they mess things up. Right. But the Patriots was very obvious. They wanted nothing to do with them man-to-man. So they played a ton of zones in the first half. And as we talked about, it, it's hard to do that. As basic as Cincinnati is, he's still smart, and it's still – within their basics, good enough to go four and five and six and eight and four and five and just pick you apart that way. So he did that. And then he just waits for his opportunity to kind of strike. He's like a fucking venom snake where he's just like, he sits there with his head in the air and he bobs and weaves and fakes a few bites. But as soon as you put that hand out there long enough, he goes, now it's time. And that's it. He kind of just waits for that. And that's where he's scary good. Um, but, yes, I still felt like in the second half it was more of their mistakes, them being a hair conservative. Mm-hmm. And here's my thing I want to get to with the Patriots. I just wish they were a little more tactically aggressive or force the issue. And I don't mean like you have to go all out and be aggressive like the Miami Dolphins. But, you know, the good defenses in football at, at some point, you know, they can find ways to let me cause a little chaos, but I can still kind of play a sound defense. Buffalo's the master at it to me, where they can rush five and slant the defensive line but still, you know, be sound in the back end and, and play coverages the right way to where it puts pressure on the defense and there's a disguise and I don't know which guy's coming, but it's not so crazy to where you're like, oh, well, if they just pick up this guy, they're going to kill them down the field. To me, there's not enough of that tactical aggressiveness from New England, and I think we've seen that in some of the games where they just are a little too willing to die the slow death for me. And uh, I, I, they're not good enough on offense. They, they yeah. got to force the issue a little every now and then. Do they still have the talent on defense? Like, are, do they have the guys? They, it's not like super good. The secondary is good. I do think the fact that I don't see, I, I think because they don't have that marquee shut down Gilmore, Revis, Akib Talib, I don't see as many of the creative coverages as we've used to see in the past, you know, where we'd see one guy playing man. And then the other six guys in the secondary doing something else on the other side of the field, 
or we doubled this guy and this guy's man, and then we're playing zone over here to a bu- it just I see that being a different thing of there. Mm-hmm. So it's not great talent. The only area where I look at them to go they're 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 special is the two pass rushers. That's the only area. Because Uche is like a superstar, and Matt Junon we know is really good. But Uche is going to be like one of the NFL sack leaders as we go on here. I, I do believe that. Uh, yeah, I was I was trying to get you to Uche, a you Michigan were. guy, good, a Michigan, yeah, Michigan guy, guy. Who could who could be uh, going to the national championship game this year? You'll be rooting on Harbaugh for sure against TCU. I, I love to hear that music to my ears <laughs> uh, in the college football semifinals this year. You're back on the Harbaugh bandwagon, right? <laughs> I am. I am. I don't want to see. I don't want to see anybody in the Big Twelve in the championship game. I mean, they just. The Big 12 doesn't deserve to be in the Final Four, in my opinion. That's what I want to say, okay? Uh, So, uh, yes, for that matter, I'd like to see (laughs) Michigan-Georgia or Michigan-Ohio State in the national championship game. I wanted to have you kind of gotten into Cincinnati here a little bit, and they've got a big one coming up with the Ravens, uh, of course. So I kind of want to save that for a second. I want to go back to the Dolphins side of things here because they got the Patriots. They're going to have to figure out a way to beat this, um, this Patriots D that might be a little conservative. So you think? Like against the Dolphins and what they do, not going to have Tua, going to have Teddy. Do you think the Patriots need to be a little more aggressive? You got to take them? some tactical aggression. Well, well, let's go, let's go to their pick six. You know what they did? They finally fucking blitzed and did something. Bur- they had faked the blitz like the whole game and dropped out. And I think that's what caught Burrow and company off guard. They were like, "Oh well, they'll drop out. They've been dropping out all game. They don't want to be man to man with us, right?" And Jamar Chase, I think, was supposed to run and out route or a comeback route and Joe tried to loft it up there and throw it as like hey I gotta throw it before you're breaking so I'm gonna throw a soft one right to where you turn out and boom it's right there but Chase like kind of went out the DB had a little outside leverage on him and I think he thought wait he's sitting on me I'm just gonna go but Joe Burrow had already thrown it but that's to my point at least they did something to force the issue and and cause put a little pressure on you that way um, yes, I, you can't. Miami is the ultimate team, I say that against. They're the ultimate. Uh, to, to me, that was one of the things at least Green Bay even changed a little in the second half. It's just a tactical guy blitzing off the edge or we're going to change the front and do, take a little chance on the coverage on this play. and uh, the, the, that. So you have to because if you just play status quo against them, we saw the best defense in football play status quo against them. And they, if Tua was on that day – they would have thrown for 500 yards against the great, the best defense in football. So that that's where, yeah, they do too much to think you can just sit back and play vanilla, and they'll make the mistake. You got to find some ways to to throw some curveballs at them. Yeah, Tua definitely did not have a half to remember in the second half of their game against the Green Bay Packers. Delray Beach 2012 says, "Hi Chris, what, what do up, you think Delray? caused Tua's fourth quarter implosion?" So the speculation yeah. out there is that he had that first half. Yeah. Uh, concussion although I don't think they've said that that's when he got the concussion it's just he's in the concussion protocol uh, right now after showing symptoms and clearly was a different half for him the first half Tua threw for 229 yards just 81 in the second half and the last three possessions in the fourth quarter they had a chance to come back and win through an interception on each one of those drives what'd you see what'd you see when you took a closer look at those three picks well like just as much as like we we just talked about like you know Cincinnati messing the game up, and that shouldn't even have been a game with the Patriots. I think we could probably say the same thing here with Miami. I mean, Miami plays Green Bay, at least in my assessment. that They win nine out of ten times. There was your one time Green Bay could win. That, that was it. it. It's one of those where you watch the game and you're going, there's no way this team is going to win this game, right? Even though I know the outcome, it's like still you're still going, wait, one team can't really run. The other one's opening up holes that are gigantic for Mostert every play. You know, at one point he's got seven completions for like 150 yards, and the other team is like the only way they scored was on a short field. Uh, it just it's it's so you know because of a good kick return and they barely got in that time. I mean, so you're just going well. There's no there's just no way. Eventually this will you know separate itself, but. You know, like we talked about on Monday, the Mostert fumble before the half and then the mistakes in the second half and Rodgers making a few plays. But here would be my big thing. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to yep. kind of lay the groundwork there. I, I, I went into this going like, wait, wait, let's see if this concussion really maybe it did affect him and that's why he was off in the second half. And I don't doubt that maybe that's why he wasn't off a little bit, but he still has a few plays and throws in the half where you go, well, he's thinking clearly and made a great play here, right? 
to where it's hard to go, okay, the concussion affect him. I, I, maybe it did to a degree. I, I don't know what happened to him a little bit here. This is the first, like, what happened moment for me. Like, what are you seeing? What are you looking? Why are you throwing the ball like that? This is the first game we've really said that. I've had other games where I go, I, you know, he left some yards on the field or he should have hit this guy or if he hits him in stride, it should have been a 70-yard touchdown. But these were like, I don't understand what he's thinking and I don't even understand the type of ball he's throwing with these ones. And that's where I guess it was just a little troubling, let alone Green Bay's offensive plays that they made, you know, some of them, I got, you know, that's just unbelievable. I don't know if that's really sustainable to think they're going to be able to do that on a consistent basis. Um, so that was a crazy one. And that's one where out of all the four games Miami has lost, I would think they were the sickest after this one on Monday morning going, how did we lose this one? Hmm. You know, we outplayed them. We out hit them. We out schemed them and we lost the football game. So maybe they'll be able to score. Teddy Bridgewater won't leave some of those plays out there on the field. But you did note on the other side of the ball for the Dolphins' defense, there is something that does scare you when they go up against the New England Patriots because they've been blitz-happy basically this whole year. Yeah. There's been a few games where they haven't blitzed as right. much and had some success, and then a few games where they've blitzed a lot and had a lot of success. Yeah. But for the most part, they seem to rely on, on blitzing this season. I think they're fourth in the NFL in blitz rate yep. uh, in their NFL rank and. um but they're not getting always pressure with the blitz. 19th in the NFL. Everybody's getting ready pressure for it. with the blitz. That's what I'm saying. Everybody's ready for it with them. So, so you think the Patriots will be ready for it in this 100%. game? A hundred percent. That they can come out and line up in these, some of these blitz alignments. The one thing I can promise you that will be ready to go for New England this week, everything else I can question about their offense, all right? The one thing they'll be ready for is to pick up the blitz. And that's where... One, I think you'd be crazy to do that against a struggling offense like this. And, you know, your, your players are better than them. And your scheme is better, too, as long as you're not overly aggressive and give them too many shots to let me just throw a ball, a, a go route to, to Tyquan Thornton. Or, you know, let me get everybody to the line of scrimmage and they give a reverse to Kendrick Bourne and he runs up the sidelines like last week for a 40-yard gain. That's where they got to be careful here. They're clearly the more talented unit on the team. So, you know, that's – they have good run-stopping defense alignment. The Patriots aren't running the ball that great as of late. That would be – yeah, I would, I would think this is, you know, be careful about the blitz in this game. You want to play man-to-man, -man, fine, but don't blitz. You know, have, play one robber and guys in the middle playing for crossers and doing that. Uh, I think that's the only way they really get burned in this one is if they just do, do too much of that. Play solid defense – and maybe run the ball. Maybe that's the formula well, for the you Dolphins. Saw that it's, it's not the team we've too, seen. Right? It, it's not the team we've seen from the Dolphins. Right. But that's been kind of the chatter. Is that yeah. why, why are they getting away from the run game so quickly? Right. It's a, it's the third week in a row we've broken them down. I think, and we uh, you've probably seen in my notes to just go, hey, it was a good running day, but I still think they could have ran it more. And, and I think it's it's one thing that yeah, I just wish there was a little more patience there. And again, I think we've talked about it. They're spoiled by how easy it's been in the passing game and everything there. And then Tua is very good at the RPOs. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is going to be good, as good in that department. He doesn't have as quick a release. He doesn't have as much experience with it as Tua does. To where maybe that lends itself to wait, we take the RPO option off on some of these and we just hand the ball off no matter what. Uh, and to me, if they were just a little more patient and, and stubborn with the run – it's then going to open up the other stuff that we saw so you know easy during the year, and and right now, yeah, you know, teams are playing for them for the past. They're 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 more worried about that. They don't totally believe they're going to run. And yeah, this was another game. I think the third in a row where I kind of went, eh, they ran it good, but they probably should have ran the ball like eight to ten more times in this one. All right, so I think that's a good uh, encapsulation. We'll talk a little bit more Bengals yeah, later on. Right, uh, Miami clinches a playoff berth with a win and a Jets loss. Uh, New England is eliminated with a loss, so they cannot They're clinch out, this week. Right. But if they lose this game, they are out and they are done. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Fareed, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.